today I'm using a size 6 round silver black velvet. I am using a mop brush that is 3 over 0, which is a Raphael pedigree uh, brush. Um, I enter, how do you say it? I interchange between these two given that I have a, what's this, a short bond paper or maybe a 9 by 12 student grade 190 GSM sheet and I'm using a Shinhan watercolor uh, half pan set and of course plain water so it would be great if you guys subscribe to my channel which is Rosan Araneta the same as this um, IG and so given that I start painting um, for if this is your first time to watch me I love to paint and lately I've been painting in the morning I've been painting um, wreaths this is literally technically my 200th 216th um, wreath and that's that's the name so i keep tabs today i am choosing this color palette no actually i don't know yet what the color <laughs> will be but i've started with red i'm one of those painters who are intuitive I just keep going until um, I see the the colors come out come alive and I stop when I feel I should so every time my my brush leaves the the screen it's because I'm just loading water nothing else and the lighter it is on the sides um, seem to explain that uh, the center portion of the flower is the darkest because this is usually where the light is least reached or last reached and um, not that I do realistic ones but I do leave white oopsies I leave white spots here and there that's to suggest that there is light or highlight that i did not um paint no i left behind and reverse psychology or reverse visual aid is that um light is hitting it okay so maybe today i will go with reds and oranges and let's see what we come up with um again i don't i don't plan on the design it just happens and um and that's the fun of it for me anyways if it looks pretty now for those who are watching thank you you may ask questions i don't mind um in the past i've i stopped talking because i'm just enjoying the moment but people tend to ask and people have commented that I'm so quiet. And since, you know, I'm teaching anyway or I'm showing people how it's done, um, I should give a running commentary of what's happening. So anyway, this is a lighter orange tangerine um, floral. So not everything should be stark and, and very, uh, you know, bright because i also would like portions that are quiet and that show contrast and at some point can be overlapped with something darker or something more um how do you say it dense in color but at least i'm laying down my not foundation but i'm laying down my uh roses Typically, they are the first flowers that I place on my my uh, paper. Okay. 
Okay, if you can tell, I just go around with a shaky hand. <laughs> and if uh, people need to know a term for it, it's called the C curve. Okay. And this is a good excuse or a good stroke for people who excuse their shaky hands with pasma in in Filipino there's a term wherein people have shaky uh, movements with their hands especially if their hands are tired like after uh, doing the laundry or massaging somebody or using the the flat the iron no so there I've made three my plan is to go by the rule of uh, odds so I'll stay with three and then I'll start building around this I will use the same color scheme I will not leave this maybe later a little yellow here and there so now I'm going to go for um, non non I don't know what to call it, non-species or um, uh, petals that are not necessarily a certain species. I call this the ribbon stroke or the bunny ear stroke because you make a U-turn but you leave a sliver of light or a sliver of... Um, paper that's not painted and that's supposed to be your light or highlight then I go back and then I just um, fix the edges a bit if you want to call it fix I just find a way to make them a little bit more fixed now why don't I add while it's wet, something to change the color a bit with. So again, you only drop color where it's wet because if not, it's going to just end up as dots like this. It will not move and we would um, like people to think we're one of the greater painters out there but really it's just uh, the nature of water to spread when it finds water okay we'll leave that behind and since there's a little purple on this I'm going to just add a little water to it and use it as a five petal flower on another side of the paper okay when that's done I'm just going to go and again give it a little shape A little outline so that I can control the how it looks again it doesn't look pretty in the beginning but if you've seen my other paintings um, it should get better in my eyes anyways it should get better as we go along um, let's see so the questions I need to answer are how long does it take to paint a painting of this size? Based on my YouTube channel um, uploads, I've seen the, the time. Um, if I'm out of practice, it goes a little over an hour. But with practice, I see that my time has gone down to about 40 minutes. So it depends also if I'm in a rush. It depends if there's still space on the paper because I'm one of those painters who likes um, a busy painting I like all all locations of the page full and be, you know I like my eyes to move and look around and see what what has been done what has what's what's happening basically 
Okay, so I've loaded orange. Maybe you did not see that because it's off cam. I'm just trying to... In Tagalog, it's called timpla. I'm just trying to um, concoct the right amounts of the, the paint versus water ratio. Okay. Oopsies. So... I have to repeat my philosophies when it comes to painting that I learned patience and I learned how to accept you know bad strokes <laughs> when I started painting seriously for fun if you can un understand that and just last night I watched a Bob Ross maybe about three actually a Bob Ross painting session on YouTube I think you should. His works and his teachings are timeless and they're very philosophical. So I'm not far behind when, when I start mentioning things about happiness and, and, and patience because that's what comes out of your brain when you're, you know, relaxed. You're looking for you're looking for people who think the same or feel the same or want to find it. I'm telling you already. <laughs> Painting is where I find relaxation and peace and forethought and satisfaction. Anyways, so I'm doing the side, um, the side swipe. Can you see? So I'm swiping with the broad side of my brush. And this gives me a fast, quick um, sweep of the paper. And I am I perceive to be um, not wasting time, but actually gaining by doing so so here at the end when i don't put any color that gives the suggestion that the leaf has curled up and um and the curled portion which is whiter is where the sun shines so i can't do that to all sides of the um flower because usually sunshine comes from one direction and um, before I paint I have to establish in my mind at least if not on the painting where the light source is okay maybe I should add a little pink the pink rose is lonely add uh, this pink flower so I'll just add here um, if you just arrived I said that I don't plan the color palette and I don't plan the design all I know is that it's going to be a wreath because I love wreaths um, possibly come Christmas I'm going to write a message in the center since some of you know that I also like calligraphy and <laughs> I might give these away for Christmas or a happy occasion because it's truly one of a kind and from the heart and you know I spent time on it so people ask um, you know how come it's so easy or it's so quick but you charge so much well you practice and then <clears throat> I'm charging you the practice time it took to get me to do this so quickly now um, and that goes for so many pro professions right now and um, it's a miracle why people still ask for discounts and for freebies when you know guys during a pandemic it's difficult but hey I know some races I'll just call it that they love any form of discount and even if it's a fake discount it makes them feel good 
it makes them feel good about their bargaining skills so, so <laughs> really it's um it's culture i guess also so it's okay to were you able to see that i'm sorry it's um okay to overlap or to make things hide now for these three roses that i started with um I think I can overlap on the orange one because it's the lightest and when you overlap colors, excuse me, <coughs> that's called glazing. And so we can glaze over this one. I will choose um, a darker red. So I'm going to go to the darker red side of things. Not yet burgundy, not yet maroon, but just darker red. <coughs> Oh, where did that cuff come from but anyways um i will do maybe a ribbon because there's not enough of those there <coughs> excuse me again and there we go I will finish this ribbon flower see if your paint at the bottom is dry you can paint over it and especially if it's a light one but if it's wet it will just you know turn soggy and ugly now when I mentioned that um, painting helped me with my patience and learning to accept it's for this reason you have to turn your paper around every so often because you need one section to dry i don't know if you can see it but my acceptance portion comes in when these little things happen you see those green spots the three green spots that's because i was writing and i used my i arrested my palm see see these green spots those are the culprits oh and then look at that i just screwed myself <laughs> um we can try and add water and then try and take it away if it's a brand new mistake so to speak so we have to be more careful and if we can't take the paint out then we learn how to be accepting <laughs> of the mistake okay so now we are going to try for the rest of the painting to find symmetry and to go about the wreath in a fashion that you know makes it look acceptably excuse me oval or acceptably round if i cannot do this for any reason then I will use the leaves I put on semi last to uh, fix the shape oh that was terrible but hey so I have to make just as terrible <laughs> other um, petals so that this terrible one doesn't um, stand out so much okay we'll fix it somehow or let's see if we can cover it with something later on and maybe just maybe we can add or drop a second color to some sections uh, this is a, a violet type of color so I'm just giving it a little character since it's ugly. Haha. <laughs> That's philosophical too. So if it's ugly, we do something to the color to, to lessen the to lessen the mistake there. Haha. <laughs> okay, so we keep going. So I move the paper around every so often because we don't want to um hit the wet parts with your hand as you're going through it kidoks 
let's move on let's try for um, a little bit pink here Ooh, so strong I'm going to make these two designs and I'm not going to add water until I finish both okay this one here and I will borrow from this one and add to them to the other petals because this was too strong it needs to be the color somehow needs to relax and so that's how I'm going to do it able to see how I um, manage that okay so that's where patience comes in also I turn the paper around again and look for another spot and I keep going let's see if we can do another ribbon here I'm changing the color somehow I'm just working with, with whatever's on my palette and then I just keep adding and subtracting to that because the magic of that is I have a million colors uh, beside me and if I keep or if I stay within the what the 30 color palette that I have then I just have 30 colors but if I keep reconstituting what I have on my palette then as I said I have a million and how fun is that oh looky looky I was able to make a six petal flower uh, that's nothing great though but uh, I never pay attention to my um, you know how I divide space for my petals and that's wrong and in this scenario I was able to fit six whoopee okay I'm going to add a little purple and I'll just change this one so it doesn't match this one so much again character character is helpful at this point there you are so those two are a little bit different guys since you're watching why don't you show some love say hi or ask me a question sometimes you know during a pandemic you feel isolated or alone and Facebook is your, <coughs> excuse me, why am I coughing? <coughs> excuse me. Facebook is a good way to connect, right? And since you're watching for free, I mean, you're getting something out of this too, you know, somehow. Talk to me, talk to me. So I paint in the mornings, lately anyways, before I set off to work from home. So this is my reboot. I am now adding more purple, more maroon or burgundy to the mix so that we have a little contrast. We have light we have shade okay see that i'll leave that alone that was actually um a break in the bristles but i like it Good morning. 
Good morning, girly. I see you. Thank you for saying hi. So this painting is going to go to um, my YouTube channel, which is Rosan Araneta. Can you go over and subscribe as soon as you can? It's free to do so, free to subscribe, right? It's somehow getting dark. Let me turn on the light. I don't know if that helped, but we have a little bit of light. Oops. So I'm doing a, a ribbon type of petal here. And then I'm cleaning the edges belatedly. I suddenly have purple or well no technically this is a violet and I noticed um, I use purple because I'm a preschool teacher and we used to um, identify that a lot with Barney but now the kids don't know who Barney is you know the purple dinosaur oh it happened again it happened again. If I can't clean this up, I'll cover it with um, with leaves later on. Okay, I have to be more careful, and that happens a lot. So as you can tell, I don't. I'm not suicidal when it happens. I used to be, <laughs> you know, working so hard on something, and then suddenly you have. You have um, a mistake. Oh, that that sucked. But not anymore. I've learned to live with sucka, suckiness. Oh, a surprise rose in this area. And it's purple. Why not, right? There you are. It's all the way underneath. So I know what. Let's cover this with a like a gladiola looking floral. And I'm going to use huh, what color? Maybe a, a, an almost pure red. I'm going to dab, 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 dab. Ha! I covered it. Then I add water. And then I just, oops, take away water. And with uh, Okay, 
it doesn't make sense right now but let me add a contrasting not complementary a darker shade I used I used a violet there let it rest maybe I'll add another flower like that here at the other end or here just to um, plump up this area and make sure that this pink one pops out let's make it a little bit more let's darken it like this okay then I remove the water or the paint from the brush and I clean it in the water and I just pull the paint up by revisiting some sections and then I just dab 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 okay then maybe I go get pure color and revisit see that and I will let nature or the nature of water um, just help the colors blend into each other maybe I will put some here because we're trying to go for a circle or a sphere so what I did was I cleaned my brush and now I'm just using the water to help it along there and I'll leave that behind or leave that be I don't want to touch that section my arm might just um, uh, you know stain it stain the paper where I don't want it to be stained so now we're working with the reds, pinks, oranges, and purples. Um, what we're missing would be yellow and green. I don't know if I will include yellow at any point, but maybe it will be like some, some bulbs here and there later at the end. I could start with the leaves, but I want to add a little bit more there. So let's. I'll turn the paper around and begin adding something. What's that something? Um, let's go with pink. And I'll go for a little bigger set of petals. <laughs> so we can work faster over this space. And then maybe one more. I just add water to the paintbrush. It's a little um, softer. Okay. Never let the paint go to waste. So lighter cup maybe. Just a little bit more water. Let's add one here. Super light. I won't touch the newly painted gladiola, right? Because the colors will mix. Well, then again, why not? Let's see what happens. Nothing happened. Haha. <laughs> okay. And I'll just keep going. Oh, this space, maybe a little pink would be nice and happy because it's empty why I'm making it a little bit more pointy at this point no reason because no actually there is the paintbrush made me make it pointy I didn't um, expect it to be but it ended up being pointy so why not
and it's wet. Add a dimension to it by dropping a darker shade. Oh, did you know? And if you're aware of Bob Ross, not one of his paintings were sold. Not that they it wasn't sellable. People were looking for them. But the ones who manage his property um, do not want to. And for every show he did, he made three paintings of the same um, subject. I learned that last night when I watched. Um, well, can I call it the documentary um, of Bob Ross? Okay. Uh, maybe something here. Psst. I just posited a dog. <laughs> I saw him smelling something and I wasn't sure if he had intentions. And so I deterred him from thinking about it any further. Maybe this is it. And now I go and work on the greens. As you can tell, I already have green on my palette and I'm going to use that. I'm not going to be one of those wasteful ones. Okay, we're just going to add water and reconstitute or reactivate the green because yes, that's the beauty of watercolor. And for those who say watercolor is the hardest medium, I never thought that way because I never knew that until I was well into painting and I was just having fun. And when you're not fearful, there are no limitations. Oh, there I go again with the, with the philosophical aspect of painting. But yes, it's so true. I learned so much. So you just suddenly just go for it and see what happens and, and, and um, change colors and mix colors. And life becomes so much fun when you're not you know thinking so much well I tend to think ahead uh, maybe that's one of my flaws but it's nice also to let go um, for some reason today especially today all the roses are getting the same green Maybe I'll make them different by adding water to it or um, using the paintbrush without reloading so I can change the shade a bit, but not by much. Okay. And later I will change the green to something else, to another shade. For the other flowers and then the way I fix the the leaves will help with the symmetry of my wreath later on so see there's a remedy for for miscalculating shape <laughs> and that's through um, the leaves okay so I've placed leaves on all my four roses and i will go start attacking the rest i'm loading a uh, an apple green it's very strong but that's okay it's a strong light color and let's begin changing strokes per flower to give it that idea that it's a 
totally different species since there are millions of them around it's hard to pinpoint what I'm doing but the variety in the painting makes it interesting at least to me and as a rule of thumb you work with the darkest colors last but I'm getting a little bored with just the apple green. So I am um, playing with the different shades. Again, we turn the paper around often so as not to wet our palms and then transfer ink or paint and ruin the rest of the painting we turn every so often and we find the spot that needs filling up Questions, questions. And let's see if we can go inwards. Nothing comes to mind, so I'm not speaking for the moment. But you may want to say hi. Or ask a question. So now I'm going to lay down my brush longer and get myself bigger petals. I'll do it again. How cool is that? Okay, add water. Let's use another green. And move on.
we have painting, I guess there's what you call a commitment. You just have to keep going. Oops. So people ask, why do you paint? And the answer is usually a counter question. Why do you ask? Why do you smoke? Why do you fool around? Why do you love kissing? Why do you love anything? Be it's a just because. And again, it calms me. I like the idea that I created something. I created, I created. Um, I am childless. I am not married. So the idea that I'm leaving something behind is a wonderful idea even if it's just a painting. I'm adding a little green blue so I'm darkening uh, these are signs and maybe a little brown these are signs that I'm almost done and I'm working with the darkest colors last which is a rule of um, watercolor unless you're outlining or what but yeah darkest colors last The last real part of this is to um, put pollen, stamens on my flowers.
I hate empty spots for some reason. Haha. <laughs> so I'm looking for them now. And I am covering them with leaves. Healthy green leaves. Okay. Almost, almost. So I'm adding dark spots to very boring areas. And then I will leave it alone. Last strokes here and there. And then I will... Um, Put the stamens and the pollen and the whatnots in the middle of the flowers, and I will, I will end the live feed. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you would like a one-on-one -on -one class, if you'd like a Zoom workshop. Or if you'd like to join me again for another one of these free live sessions wherein I just keep talking and painting my heart out. I hope you join me for the for any of those. So I have a YouTube and an Instagram. Please like and subscribe. Okay. Okay, dokes. Now, the center of my flowers. Why don't I play with blue since I have no blues and yellows? So, I'm just going to dab blue and then I will be as I mentioned before systematic so as not to miss any flower Hi, good morning, Brian. So for if you've just joined me, I'm using blue today for the center, not black not dark brown um i guess for contrast and i hardly use blue for the center or the stamens or the pollen something new something different
did I miss any? Let me know. And I will end this painting now. Thank you for joining me and see you soon. Have a very nice day, everyone. Bye!